But what I really want to know is, does Dr. Chen have like a uh, psychic link to Mothra, kind of like the twins do in the original series? Okay, so the question pertains to Dr. Chen and her connection to Mothra. Now, this is always an interesting topic because I always find that half the audience catches it and half the audience doesn't. Who caught the Mothra twins? Yes. Right, so who didn't catch the Mothra twins? Don't be ashamed. Really? Wow. Okay. Okay, so in case you... All right, so for those of you that didn't, uh, Zhang Ziyi plays Dr. Chen, who you met, who... Very beautiful woman, short, black hair. She's on board the Argo with the rest of the Monarch crew. Now when Mothra hatches from the waterfall, you see a close-up of Zhang Ziyi again. She's got long hair. And then there's a whole scene after that where she pulls up her family photos and she's standing next to her twin sister. So <laughs> it's amazing, like some people don't pick up on it despite close-ups of the pictures and you know, shots of her whole family with, and they're all twins. Um, but yeah, so the idea is that that's sort of a modern incarnation of the twins. And in my mind, her family has a very long history uh, with Mothra. I love the idea that for every generation of Mothra, there is a corresponding set of twins that sort of act as her emissaries. Uh, there was actually a post credit scene that was scripted and storyboarded and we had a location and everything that we didn't get to shoot, which would have been um, in addition to the one that you did see, where you saw uh, Dr. Chen walking through Tokyo. She goes into uh, you know a classic smoky bar, walks past a very heavy looking security guy, goes downstairs and emerges into what looks like an ancient temple that looked a lot like uh, the opening one that you saw in China. And there she comes and she meets her sister. And they have a conversation, which is very strange. You hear music kind of coming down uh, from a hallway. And the sisters are, are talking about how they're not sure if these young girls are ready. Uh, that they're too young. And then the one sister says, so are we once. And they emerge into a huge egg chamber and there's a second egg. And then in front of the egg are these two like six-year-old little girls singing to it. And so I actually found, I know, it's heartbreaking. Just to try to imagine it. Um, if some fan wants to shoot it, you know, great, go for it. Uh, but I actually found two adorable uh, little uh, girls, two twins, and they learned the song and everything. So I think I have it on my iPhone. Maybe I'll post it to Twitter later. Do it. Uh, you know what, I'm almost positive I do, so I will. Uh, but it was, I, I so wish we got to shoot it, because it would have sort of cemented. Uh, but yes, I do believe they all have a psychic connection to Mothra. When writing the character of Mark Russell, did you like have any uh, thought of the original Dr. Sirizawas and Gojira? Because his disliking for the Orca really reminds me of his disliking, of Dr. Sirizawas' disliking for the original Oxygen Destroyer. Uh, so the question was whether Mark Russell was inspired by the original uh, Dr. Sarazawa from the 54 film. Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, there wasn't any. Uh, for me, Ken Watanabe's character was the direct inspiration uh, based off the original Dr. Sarazawa. Actually, Mark Russell was inspired by Kurt Russell. Okay. <laughs> I think we have time for two more questions. Uh, let's do four more. Come on. We got four more questions. <laughs> We gotta give away some Blu-rays too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, had this not been a sequel film, we definitely emphasize the motif that Godzilla is a human protector. Had this not been a sequel film, would you still have done that? Uh, the question was uh, basically whether or not Godzilla would have been depicted as a human protector had this not been a sequel. I will say that I don't view Godzilla as a human protector per se. I view him as protector of the planet and that Godzilla will step in and deal with any threat to the natural ecosystem, whether that be other creatures or humans, if we should step out of line. Does that mean the second egg is Batra? <laughs> so he's the second egg. Uh, no comment. <laughs> Why did you have to bring them in? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Does that uh, stop you or make you hesitate? To uh, 
Okay, all right. So yeah, uh, this question, uh, tricky one. How do I handle the critical response to the film? Uh, which as many of you know is mixed to say the very least. Um, here's the thing. Critics aren't bad people. Some of my best friends are critics. <laughs> they mean well. It's their jobs to be tough uh, on movies. That said, um, the f it doesn't matter in the long run, the critical opinion. There are many films, many of which are my favorite movies, which did not get a great critical response upon release, uh, nor did they have amazing commercial success upon release. I like to look at the big picture and the uh, long lifespan of a film. So what really matters is what you guys think and whether or not you decide to show this film to your kids and your friends and your nieces and nephews and that will ultimately decide the fate of this film. Because it's more important to me that this film was embraced by the audience that it was attended for, and that uh, it is passed on from one generation to the next, which is why we're here tonight. Uh, besides Godzilla vs. Kong, what other MonsterVerse movies are we looking at, and will you be writing or directing them? <laughs> uh, the question was, outside of Godzilla vs. Kong, are there any other MonsterVerse films planned, uh, and whether I'd be writing or directing them. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is next, so that's currently slated for March. Uh, my writing partner, Zach, and I did some work on the script. Not a lot. I was busy making this one. Uh, beyond that, Legendary and Toho do have plans beyond that one, uh, which I will not say or I will be shot on sight. <laughs> so, uh, I'm pretty sure there's at least three or four spies in the audience with laser sights on me. So let's go uh, way in the back. Beanie. Uh, hi. Uh, I was wondering what your favorite uh, era of Godzilla was before like, the reboots and everything. Uh, What's my favorite Godzilla era? Um, it's hard to pick, I'm being honest. That said, Showa is my first introduction to the universe and the mythology, so that's always gonna have a special place in my heart. Way in the back, way in the back, uh, yeah. I don't run the marketing department, sorry. Well, my 